we are wrong guys we are wrong and we need to face this fact okay it is absolutely counterintuitive what i'm about to say but i'm sorry to say that we have been doing it very wrongly okay we've been feeding our animals with green leaves with green grasses with green fodder and it is wrong Okay, guys, um, you once again, welcome to Ace Rabbit Farm, uh, where we share our experiences. But before I dive into this topic, just do me a favor. Take a good look at the pictures and the background. It is just brown, right? And yet highly nutritious. And these are images that I got from three different rabbit farms commercial rabbit farms that i visited and they cannot be wrong or at least they are seeing good results and so that pushed me to do further research you know it's just brown grass dried grass and yet this is a very green environment where we are why are these people feeding their animals dry dead dry brown grass so I got disturbed, I got worried. And yet we on the other side, in the tropics, we are feeding dark green uh, materials to our animals. So guys, uh, look, I've done some reading, I've done some research, and we've already started practicing that in Ace Farm. And I thought this is an appropriate time for me to bring this to you because we are seeing results. We are seeing great results. The, the research material is right. The commercial farmers are doing it right and that is what we are now emulating as you can see on the background that's the ace farm we've started piling up our animals with dry dry uh, grass that we feed okay and so far the results fantastic so let me give some context okay guys we are on uh, our return journey back home and I just thought I'd bring you some scenery views. I mean, look at the, the, the green, the water feature on the dam. Uh, we, we took a, a couple of rest on the road. And um, yeah, here are some scenes, just agricultural land, agriculture, agriculture everywhere. Green, green, green everywhere. But what is more important is how they transform this green environment, these green leaves, these green grasses into hay that eventually helps them to solve the feed problem and so today this is just uh, a gist of what is yet to happen what is yet to come but regardless of all of this observation one critical thing stands out you know we've got so much greens here but that is not what they feed the animals so like I said, it is, it is counterintuitive, uh, especially when you have these green grasses in our area. And our, our past or our background from feeding grass cutters, that takes, you know, green grass. We just jump on the bandwagon and started serving our rabbits exactly the same green materials. Guys, the research has made it very clear the result i've seen is very clear and therefore there is nothing as good as sharing with you what we have learned and what we are practicing guys um shall we just establish two maybe one or two principles before we continue so number one dry all your greens before feeding and maybe why why would, would i want to say this because number one you're already giving these animals water, right? But the second point here is that some of these greens do contain toxins or they do contain soluble starch. And these soluble starch or toxins can easily poison your animal 
or can easily cause your animal to have bloating stomach because these starches which eventually transform into sugar is really not good for your animal so that principle number one always dry all your green materials let them dry to a point of no water or moisture content at all before feeding okay that is point number one the second principle is i would say always have some hay in the hatch for your animal the hatch must never 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 be empty always have dry material hay in the hatch regardless of whether you've already fed them in the morning you fed them in the evening there always has to be dry hay in their hatches so with uh, these two principles firmly established look you are on the right track to success and what this means that all leaves i'm talking about what we normally use in west africa i'm talking about it, your tridax your bitter leaf your popo leaf your elephant grass you know moringa any leaf that you feed your animal adanko milk you know all those things that we call in ghana please any leaf that you feed your animal just make sure it is completely dried okay before putting them in your animal cages and guess what it should be there unlimited always make sure it is dried and is in the cage of your animal that for me we are on the right track to success so now uh, back um, to the reset topic look and it says the effect of different feeding on rabbits you know this was written by J.L. Prebo and another person called A.L. Meredith. Okay, look, I'm going to leave uh, the links to their references so that when you have time, you can go and read for yourself. Now, dietary, dietary composition and feed presentation. So it's not just about the feed content. It's also how you present the feed. Okay, that has got significant impact on the animal behavior. You know, so failure to provide a suitable diet can lead to reduced welfare. It can lead to developing of poor health, of course, inability of the animal to express its normal behavior. Now, this particular statement is so loaded. Inability to express normal behavior. So what this also means is, look, you can have a New Zealand white, a New Zealand red or a Californian. But because you are not feeding them appropriately or correctly, it will lead to this animal inability to express their normal behavior. So what are some of the normal behaviors? Large litters, you know, well-mannered, good motherliness, good bone to I mean, meat to bone ratio. If you do not feed them correctly, all of this become abnormal. And eventually... Not feeding them well will obviously lead them to now develop abnormal behavior. Okay. So now on the greens and why not to feed these animals with the greens. Look, in the winter areas, you know, bugs, uh, pathogens, they normally die out during the winter season or they even hibernate. But in the, in the tropics, this is not the case. In the tropics, these insects, these bugs are on 100% of the time. Maybe some of these pathogens or insects will slow down during the hamatan or the dry season. But they are always there. Number two, the high humidity also creates a suitable environment for these pathogens and bacteria and, you know, uh, insects to continue thriving. Now, their usual area of uh, location will be on the leaves of these greens that we feed our animals. And usually this is the reason why some of us go ahead extra mile to wash the greens, salt them, dry them before feeding. Just because we are aware of all these pathogens that are very, very harmful to our animals. And now to the dry um, grasses or dry um, leaf matters. Look, all the pathogens issues will be reduced or at least solved. 
okay because in a dry environment these pathogens do not really want it they want fresh and moist environment now as soon as you dry it the rationale is their numbers will reduce okay so just be aware that when you are doing this kind of drying there is no molding you know or mold can also survive in a damp environment so you do proper air drying sun drying air drying okay now it is also an opportunity to store some of these dry materials as hay for future use and again this become very significant in the winter areas where there are no green grasses actually in the winter season so they normally harvest and store during their summer times now the last point is the fact that it is always present in the hatches of your rabbit in other words once it is dried once it is available always make sure you supply that in abundance into your rabbit hatches now this is regardless of your pellet that you feed in the morning and in the evening there always has to be look at them they are always nibbling on it there always has to be something dry grass in their hatches all the time now let's let me quickly summarize so if you feed only pellets you know your animals may finish eating that and will become bored you know very quickly afterwards so what this means is extra dried hay will always give them something to nibble on you know it will let them have the ability of behaving like in a foraging environment you know and this encourages normal behavior okay so now look i don't want to be too technical but further in the article it says that stereotypes i'm going to put a word down for you stereotypes in pigs chicken is developed through frustration this frustration comes about when the animal has nothing to do and is bored therefore giving them nice dry hay encourages them to start putting up normal and good behavior so folks there you have it it looks counterintuitive to be feeding our animals dry hay right but it's actually the right thing to do we are not depriving them this dry hay are still very very nutritious so there you have it guys all the best with your ventures keep farming uh, and i hope with this content i've brought you i've managed to at least throw some light on some of your difficulties and sometimes even trying to understand where some of the diseases that you pick up comes from okay all the best guys keep farming keep farming wow these are massive no i mean look at this <laughs>